One of the challenges facing us today is applying a new paradigm to the management of our patients with cardiovascular disease. With our diagnostic capabilities, we can personalize our investigation of a patient and subsequently personalize the treatment of that patient. By not only looking at the patient's history and their ECGs, but actually by looking at the substrate, at what's going on inside the heart, we can have a thumb idea of which patients are likely to respond and which might not. We can use data that's been derived either from magnetic resonance imaging or even CT scanning imaging now, and this can give us an idea of the patient's anatomy. By using computer modeling, we can test whether a patient will respond to therapy. So we're moving much more towards a sort of precision or targeted approach in individual patients to try to improve response. Guys and St. Thomas's is one of the largest teaching hospitals and university hospitals in the United Kingdom. Based in the centre of London, there has in fact been a St. Thomas's hospital based on the south bank of the Thames since the 12th century. The clinical and intellectual atmosphere here is unique. Together with my colleagues in bioengineering and advanced cardiovascular imaging, including MR physics, we have the ability to answer very quickly questions which we ask, all under one roof. We're seeking to expand the boundaries of how diagnostic imaging can inform therapeutic intervention in patients with heart rhythm disturbances to understand why a particular patient on a particular day suffers a rhythm disturbance which could potentially be fatal. In the United Kingdom, at least 1.5 to 2% of our population suffers with atrial fibrillation. Therefore, it's very important for us to find better ways to manage this condition in a more cost-effective way. The current interventions we use seek to ablate or destroy in a controlled way clearly defined cardiac tissue. Advanced cardiac imaging allows us to assess atrial structure. It's important for us to understand which parts of the atrium are the sites that we should target and also how safely can we target them. Sitting here within the XMR environment, we have the ability to take a patient on the morning of their procedure, perform a scan to assess their atrial structure and function, and then to tailor our procedure according to that individual patient's anatomy, and depending on where we see sites of scar or abnormal tissue, or sites of thick or thin atrial tissue. Cardiac resynchronization therapy is an extremely powerful treatment, but approximately a third of patients don't respond to this treatment by looking for areas of scar, by looking for areas of late electrical or mechanical activation, and by using that data and taking it into the catheter lab to actually guide the procedure at the time, we hope to be able to then make a bespoke treatment for the patient to guide the lead to the optimal position in that patient's heart to improve the response to therapy. We we're also able to develop, in conjunction with the, our biomedical engineers here, yeah. biophysical models derived from MRI and electrical input. We can actually test in silico what the response to a patient's treatment will be before we actually give it to the patient. There are several studies or programs we're undertaking in conjunction with other centres in the UK and Europe actually to validate these models. And also we want to make the models more sophisticated and require less invasive data. We want them to be quicker as well, so we hope to be able to now create this in hours to minutes in the future. When we are looking at patients with ventricular tachycardia, cardiac MR allows us to image the shape and size of the ventricle and its function, but particularly it allows us to image the scar and the areas around the scar, the border zone or the grey zone, but getting that information into the cardiac catheterization laboratory is difficult. That is why we're pursuing doing these procedures inside the MR scanner, where we can both observe the substrate accurately, but also accurately target it by tracking our device to do the ablation, the catheter, to the right point of the substrate. We can ablate arrhythmias in patients inside an MR scanner for atrial flutter, but doing this for ventricular tachycardia is, is much harder. We have developed the technologies, working with Siemens Healthcare and Imrecor to be able to do this in an animal model. And a next step over the uh, coming year or two for us is to translate that into studies in patients. Almost every patient we see is interested in understanding better why they have suffered the problem they have suffered. Therefore, every patient who comes into hospital contact with a doctor or a nurse is offered the opportunity, if appropriate, to participate in a research study. 
The UK's National Health Service indicates that all patients should have access to clinical research should they wish to be involved in research. We do screening of patients as they attend their clinics and patients are identified if they have specific pathological conditions or clinical disease states and if these conditions match up to current research studies they are approached for inclusion into these research studies. The transition of clinical data acquisition will ultimately be dependent on the publication and dissemination of our research findings, but we are already starting to see that patients are benefiting from some of the work that's being conducted on our site. With the support of the infrastructure provided by the NHS, King's College London, and our in-house services in bioengineering, medical physics, cardiovascular imaging, and interventional cardiac electrophysiology, we hope that our work using imaging technology to assess arrhythmia substrate in patients will lead to earlier identification of patients in whom intervention is appropriate and better interventions in those patients.